welcome to Sports Econ 101. And for those of you joining our show for the first time, imagine a few guys sitting around a bar having drinks without the drinks, talking sports and business with you, the audience listening in. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, well-known radio sports personality, Bruce McGowan, and Vern Glenn of CBS affiliate KPIX-TV in San Francisco. On this show, we discuss sports from topics from a business perspective. And in addition, we're going to ask sports trivia questions where we're giving away vacations for the first three callers with the correct answer. Our phone number is 888-660-4495. Write that number down, 888-660-4495, because you're going to use that number to answer the trivia questions for three vacations given away during each commercial break. That's right, we're giving away nine vacations during this show. Now, the vacations are not sponsored by the radio station, but by Lighthouse Resort and Marina, which is located uh, just north of San Francisco. And the vacations are free. Their only request, a $75 cleaning fee to cover housekeeping expenses. Check them out at lighthouse4fun.com. Today, we're going to have a special guest, Doug Hendrickson, who is a sports agent. And we're going to ask all the kinds of different questions that uh, people are always wanted to ask sports uh, agents but haven't had a chance, such as what percentage of the contracts do they get? You know, how do they get paid? And why are some sports, uh, they, they have limitations as to how much the agent can make. Um, also about retirement and how that comes into play. We're also going to hopefully touch on Dwight Howard uh, saying to uh, the, the world he's going to gut this thing out, whatever that means. Uh, that sounds like a real team player to me. Uh, Johnny Manziel now says that he was not paid. And we'll see how all of this unfolds. Miguel Cabrera is running for a second consecutive triple crown. Uh, what are his chances for that? And Chris Paul, not LeBron, is named as the new NBA union president. Kind of reminds me of Kevin Johnson, the uh, mayor of Sacramento. The guys are kind of similar. And this segment of Sports Econ 101 is sponsored by IRA Services Trust Company, providing self-directed retirement accounts with more choices, diversification, and among the lowest fees in the industry. Stay tuned because you're listening to Sports Econ 101, and we will be right back. Good. Okay. Five seconds of silence. I'd already done the first two segments as just sort of a teaser, so now we can see how this works. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn. And it's Bruce. on now. It's on now. All right. right. <laughs> and Bruce McGowan. Good to be with you, Edward. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad you're back with us. Yeah. Uh, we are in the studio here with Doug Hendrickson, who is a sports agent with the company Octagon. And Doug, give us an insight what it's like to be a sports agent. Well, it's almost like the movie Jerry Maguire, except that instead of one client, you have uh, I have 40. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, you're everything. You're, you're the father, you're the big brother, you're the mentor, you're the advisor. The babysitter. Uh, of these players and family. So instead of just, it's one client times their wife and a girlfriend and uncle and father and mother. So you're really trying to take them as a, as a young athlete, young kid to help develop in their whole life. Whether it be advising on financial stuff, taxes, off the field, stuff with their wife and family. Uh, marketing, PR, post-career, all these different things into one. You're trying to really take them and, and, and educate them and, and get them through their career and into the post career. Has any client ever said, show me the money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, after, after the movie, Vern, it happens all the time. It hasn't happened a whole lot anymore. Popular popular refrain there. And, and do, you, do you actively go af after athletes, or do they have to find you? Do you get referrals? How does that work? You know, gen, mo most times, I mean, I, I normally sign four to six clients a year, and the majority of them are, you know, I'm going after them. I'll, I'll get a few players every year that will come with me from, uh, you know, a former player that at their school or, or a different referral. But usually it's a cold call or, you know, at schools I've, I've been there for a long time. It's, it's the relationships. But most of them are, are picking up the phone, telling who I am, who the company is, and, and starting the process of usually five to six months as far as recruiting. And then, you know, guys like, I guess, Lee Steinberg, you know, he's – the famous one, right? You know, when you're coming at people, you know, how much do you have to tell them, you know, hey, you know, this is who I represent? I guess that's a big thing is to say, you know, these who's already in my portfolio. I mean, how do you even start then? Usually, usually it's honestly, it's, it's kind of an initial cold call. You call a kid up, tell them who you are, who you represent. Then I'll send them out materials on, on myself and the company. And that usually gets you in the door in the final three on almost any top kid. But then the, lot of the work begins. It's relationship, it's trust. It's, it's how we can do a better job and add more value than other firms can add. Why? 
and so it's a, it's a dogfight for the top guys. There's a lot of top firms out there. So initially, the name and what you've done will get you the door the first, uh, uh, the fi the probably finals two or three of most kids. But then the really work begins in regards to uh, you know selling them and letting them feel good about who you are and what you've done. Well, there was a, an article in the uh, Chronicle last month, and I thought it was really interesting about uh, was it Jason Justin Tuck. Oh, with the Giants. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, many people obviously haven't because it's a national show. They haven't read that article, so they may not know. Could you get into that? Because it's an interesting story. Yeah, it's funny. I, I met Justin out in uh, my partner and I did out in Notre Dame when he was a junior, and. Um, you know, had a really good meeting at the dorm, and I knew this kid was special. I mean, he was kind of, the the, the, the the kids were around him, and he just had that aura about him. He was going to be something special. And he said, hey, I like you a lot, So, but I need you to come out and meet the family. Of course. So he said he's from a town called Kellyton, Alabama. I Googled it, like 104 people. And come to find out, out of the 104, I think 90 were tucks. <laughs> and uh, we did change the name yeah. of this. The, the, the state. It's called no. Tuckville. Yeah, so exactly. we, we, we get, I get out there, and it's uh, you know all dirt road. He said, look, call me when you get to the gas station. I'll come get you. He's going to find my place. So go to his house and, and uh, get there, and there's probably uh, you know, 15 people in the room and, and all big, 6'5", 300-pound guys. It was his uncles, his father, and his grandfather. And his grandfather just told me a story how he, you know, how he, how he hit a, uh, a cow with his hand and knocked the cow out uh, <laughs> during the farming thing. And he lifted, he lifted a car up with his bare hands. I'm thinking to myself, okay, I haven't even started my skill yet, so I'm, I'm in trouble here if this doesn't go well. <laughs> and if and the kid doesn't want to sign, you can always get the grandfather there, to sign. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I ended up having a great meeting, and it went really well. And he said, hey, you're my guy. And now that's been nine years ago, and he's, uh, he's, done, he's done okay for himself. And any siblings? Uh, unfortunately for Justin, no. He's got uh, six sisters. Oh. But, uh, uh, I bet some of them could probably play. <laughs> get exactly. one at the WNBA or something. Yeah, yeah I'm going to ask you, you know, you got the Trifona brothers, uh, Marcus up in Seattle, and the new guy who's a first-round pick from Atlanta. How did you get uh, acquainted with them? Because once you got the first one, I would think it would make it a little easier to get the second and the third one. But you told me a story well uh, before the show about, um, about them and a little bit about how you met them, uh, I guess, First one was just getting into the pros, and the others were um, just kids, I guess, huh? Yeah, so uh, you know, I, I cold called Marcus 11 years ago and, and uh, had a good conversation. He said, look, I, I met with him once, and he said, you got to come meet mom and, and dad. And went to the Cone where he's from, and basically, uh, never forget, Desmond, who's now was a first-round pick of the Falcons, was there, and Isaiah was there. He was still uh, in, in high school, and um, you know, ended up signing Marcus, and his dad ended up taking – uh, all of them out and raced them in a 40 in the driveway in Tacoma, and the dad ended up winning. But, um, you know, from Marks, is great. So Marks is a first-round pick, played a long time in Seattle, now he's in Jacksonville, and then from him, uh, and did a great job and got the brother, Isaiah, who's now with the Jets, and then Desmond, a the first-round pick this year. So it's been a it's been a great run with the true fonts. I'm just mad there's no more kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing, Steve. You didn't have to cold call anymore yeah. in there. You just... You know, you had one, then you get the sibling. Well, it's funny. This year, I called up Connie before the season and when Desmond was there. I said, "I go, I'm not. I don't have to come and present, do I? I, <laughs> I have him." Right? And she said, "Yeah, you Doug, you've done well enough. You're, you got him." I, said, I would think it was mushroom too. I mean, obviously, the more people you get, as long as you can pay attention to them and they don't slip through the cracks, which doesn't sound like you're that type of guy. You know, that you just be able to just steamroll it. Yeah, and, and for me long. now, it's, you know, when I first started, it was all about, look, if a guy was breathing, I would take him. Sure, I, I, sure. If I wanted him, right? Yeah. Uh, now you want guys that, you know, are going to make your hair not fall out as quickly and, yeah. and go, grow, grow gray as well. But, uh, you know, you want guys that, you know, get it and, and want to look towards the future and want to really take advantage of what we can offer them. Because I always tell the players, I say, listen, we as agents have to give you as much, if not more, than you're giving us. And I truly believe that. So if you have a top player, you're not giving them a lot in return, I'm not doing my job. And so I feel like we have a lot to offer. We do great things. And, and uh, I'm a big believer in that, so it's worked out well. Do you give them a mental health test? Because some of these guys are head cases. And that could, like you say, could really tear your hair out. No, it's it's tough. I mean, but, you know, these guys go through a whole ebb of changes more than anybody early in their career, whether when you're 21 and starting out in a career, let's say Oracle or Salesforce or Intel or Facebook, you don't go through what these guys go through. And so, you know, part of us is a psychologist as far as listening to them, helping them make the right decisions, educating them on how to go about certain things, whether it be with teammates, whether it be with the general manager, the trainers, whoever it may be. But, no, it's, it's definitely uh, a lot of that's involved on a daily basis. 
I find, you know, one thing I find interesting about agents, some of them really specialize with certain sports. Like you'll see a guy just going after football and basketball players. Others will move around, but it just seems like, is that a, is that a particular reason for that, or does it just make it easier if you do stick, stick to a certain sport just because the network of people that are within that sport are easier to kind of contact? Right, it's a good question. It used to be you could kind of do more than one sport. I first started out doing football, but I had some baseball as well. Now the the seasons go year-round, and so to do more than one sport successfully is very, very tough. You can have no life. It's hard. Agents use it against you recruiting and say, hey, you know, where's Doug at? He's at, he's at a baseball game, or mm -hmm. he's somewhere else. So it's hard to do that now, and it's football, as you know, really has no offseason. I mean, you go from the playoffs, the Super Bowl, into the – uh, the, the combine, senior bowl, and the all-star games, and the super bowl, and you have the combine, you have free agency, and you have mini camps. So it's really hard to do more than one sport successfully. All right. Yeah. So how do you how do you protect a guy? And maybe you can do this in the next segment. How do you protect a guy and make sure that there's money at the end of the rainbow okay. when the when, when the five year I guess on average career is done? Okay, Doug is gonna hold, we're gonna hold that thought because Doug's gonna answer that when we get back from break. We're going to the first commercial break here, and again, the trivia theme is the World Series. Name the only three World Series in which every game was won by the home team. And here's a hint, all of them were after 1980. The first three callers with the correct answer won a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouse4fun.com. Call 888-660-4495 to answer this question. Name the only three World Series in which every game was won by the home team. Mm. And a hint again is uh, they were it, all the World Series were after 1980. And again, our phone number is 888-660-4495. Make sure to include your name, your email address. Speak slowly, please, when uh, you call and uh, spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't touch that dial because when we come back, Doug, Doug is going to be uh, back with us answering questions about what it's like to be a sports agent. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. Good. All right. Yeah, man. There. Mm -hmm. Quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's home yeah. for you? Are you still in the city? Marin. Oh, you're in Mill Valley. Oh, okay. Good. Mm -hmm. I uh, started dating a young lady from Mill Valley, and uh, she later became my wife. We uh, she, she, we, we moved to Sausalito mid, mid 90s. Uh, got married, started having kids. Um, Where do kids go to school? Uh, oldest one goes to TAM. Okay. Middle one goes to Mill Valley Middle. Youngest one goes to one of the elementary schools in Mill Valley. Got gotcha. Strawberry Point. So it's a uh, middle school process. Three though. boys, man. They're all jocks. None play football, unfortunately. Good. Good. But uh, <laughs> it's too in fact, it's funny. The youngest one, the the youngest one, played one year of Pop Warner, a little tiny mite football. What and, did they play? Uh, in in Mill Valley. But what sports so, they play? What sports they play now? Not football, but what is, what's their main? He's a year round swimmer. A swimmer. Wow. Okay. It was a year round swimmer. It was one of those. It was a year round swimmer. And he was playing football. Uh, if 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 it was if it was a football game or, or a meet, he'd always he'd always swim. Yeah. So, so swimming always took priority. But uh, but he was a he was a big thick linebacker and he was aggressive because he'd always try and just beat up on his older brothers. So we said, oh, we got the energy here. Let's let's have him play football. And then he uh, he just started blowing up guys from the get go. And then we st then we played a team. And then uh, that that started taking out some of his teammates and he saw how bad people could get hurt and then he got in his head and he was like, ah, I don't know. That See, was I, I, I wish that there was pro women's professional softball because that's the, that's the sport that my daughter's in and yeah. the background is my, uh, the strength comes from my side of the family but the specialty is like my, my wife's dad played a short time for the Pittsburgh Steelers when, before they had the face mask <laughs> and, and her mother was a prima ballerina in New York. So you got, I mean, that's a good combination. Yeah, you know? she's works some agility there. there. Yeah, yep. she's good. Um, but uh, you know, I said, listen, sweetie, that's how I want you to get to college. You know, nice college coming Yeah. But there's no real money in it. Mm -hmm. Well, like, as long as you get to school and get a scholarship. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. exactly it. I think yeah. I got your answer, by the way. You do? Well, well, well two-thirds of the way. Okay. Uh, one of them I'm positive, well, two-thirds probably. Okay, we'll let you answer. Yeah, we'll let you go, Brucey, on that one. All right, ready? Here we go. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn and Bruce McGowan, and we're in the studio here with sports agent Doug Hendrickson. And when we cut to the first commercial break, we asked this trivia question. Name the only three World Series in which every game was won by the home team. Bruce, do you think you know at least most of the answers? After 1980, well, I know for, for a fact that uh, 
Minnesota uh -huh. against the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Correct, 1987. I believe St. Louis against uh, Milwaukee in 1982. No. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, 1991. Yes. Minnesota versus the Braves. Braves. Very good. I think 1992. No, 2001. Diamondbacks over the Yankees. Wow. Very good. Very good. Very good. I know more about Very the good. than I do about the Very Bucks. good. Very yeah. good. Uh, Vern, want to finish off your question there for Doug? Yeah, 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 we were, yeah, we were talking about that before the break. How do you, how do you help these guys ensure that there's that there's a sack full of money there at the end of the rainbow when you know their career is either cut short or when it's over? Well, that's a great question, Vern. That is the single most difficult thing of my job. And as an agent, I don't handle the money. Um, we advise, we can help out, and all that. Um, so you can lead them to water, but yeah. but, uh, but they they gotta well, they gotta drink it right. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, you hear from so many horror stories. I mean, you just probably read an article. Terrell Owens sued his agent for basically fraud and deceit, and for helping him pushing him to a financial advisor who was a complete scumbag, and it sued him for six and a half million dollars because you know he trusted his agent mm -hmm. to help him find somebody, and the guy he chose was a guy that you know Rose now was getting kickbacks from, and and a lot of things. It's gonna be an ugly situation, but. First thing I try to do is is make sure number one that all these guys are with a big uh, platform of a company, whether it be Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, UBS, something like that. Because if the you advisor, protect yeah, you right, protect yourself. if the advisor is doing something fraudulent, that money is going to be back in the account immediately, versus an independent person or independent firm. So I first make sure that they're with a, an established firm, uh, so they're protecting the money part of it. Second of all, you know, I look at these guys' statements every month to find out what they're doing, where they're at with their budget, making sure that they're staying intact, uh, making sure the little things are done the right, making sure the right, the right umbrella policies are handled, the right car insurance. Most importantly, making sure that their debts are paid off and they're done playing. Most players, the problem they have is that when they're done playing sports, they still have twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month in bills or higher, and the debts aren't paid off with no income stream coming in. So, you know, try to make sure that everything's paid off and they're done playing, they have no debts, they got money in the bank, and they can live that way. Make sure prenups are done with their wives. Oh, oh my God. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Oh, which, uh, Lord. Which is a killer. I mean, and unfortunately, the stat is 68% of these guys are bankrupt or divorced yeah. three years when they're done, after they're done playing football or basketball or, or baseball. And so, you know, I, I stay on these guys. Uh, my wife's in the hedge fund world, so I see that mm -hmm. side of things. So I try to bring the people that I'm associated with in with these guys' lives and educate and making sure that these guys don't become statistics. But that is the hardest thing to do on a daily basis. But what about the challenges, Doug? Because, I mean, this we're all a product of our environment, right? So, I mean, here you come along, you know, you've, 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 you've sold yourself on the parents, you've signed this guy, they're, they're, they're having a great career, but then there's their homeboys, you know? Hey, man, let's get eyes. some Cristal. <laughs> hey, hey, man, hey. I yeah, hey, let's get that Bentley, man. Hey, man, you the man. How do you, how do you... Yeah, Bert, how many Bentleys do you own? <laughs> I know, I know. Right? I, mean, that must be, I mean, you must, you know, pull your hair out when you see this guy, because these guys, these guys are around for as long as the money's around, right? Oh, yeah, no, it, that, that's the hardest part. I mean, look, I have a lot of family members that don't like me. I have a lot of their, their yeah. boys that don't like me, girlfriends. I've had to tell two clients, uh, wives or girlfriends, that they need a prenup. And I said, look, you don't want to invite me to the wedding, I'm fine, but as long as you got it, I'm okay. <laughs> but, you know, the problem is you can't go back. And, and one of my clients, Lamar Woodley, is one of the highest paid players in the NFL linebacker Steelers. You know, uh, he got kind of called out by his crew at some point. He said, look, man, I, I can't come back here to Saginaw and do what you guys are doing. I got the Roonies who are writing me checks, large ones, mm -hmm. every other week. Right. I can't come back and do what I used to do. I'm sorry. So, you know, you want hopefully the guys that can – stand up to their friends and their family and say, listen, I, this has got to be my money first. If I can do other things with it, great, but i got to take care of myself first. But no, that's a great question, Bert. That's the hardest part about it is to, and then and the other things, you know, hey, help me start this business or help right. me do this. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And these guys all think they're in the in the private equity world. And they're like, <laughs> oh, sounds great. Well, you know what? You ask the people at KKR, 99 out of 100 deals, they'll turn down. Sure. So now wow. these athletes get 10 exactly. in a week. Oh, they're all great. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I love to cook, so I want to own a restaurant. Is yeah. it true? Is it true? You actually called a car dealership after a client drove off the lot in a uh, expensive car. We'll just call it, just to say, hey, man, you gotta, hey, hey man, we 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 gotta bring that car back. No, I'll tell you the story. It's funny. Kevin Barlow, one of my longtime clients, who's now since retired with the Niners at the time, 
he, he calls me and, uh, and, and lets me know that he just bought a Bentley. And I'm like, you did? I said, where'd you buy it? They told me. I called the dealership. And the ironic part is the time, he bought it on a Sunday. He was smart. He bought it on a Sunday, and the dealership let him drive off with no money. Said, okay, you get the truck on Monday. I called the dealer. I said, you know what? That car will be back in basically uh, in, in, in one hour. You're taking this thing back. And I gave Kevin a tongue lash like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I, actually had, I actually had to drive down to San Jose on a Sunday, and basically, you know, I, I chewed him out like you wouldn't believe, and the car got back. And he did talk to me for a couple of weeks, but I was fine. How much does a Bentley cost, by the way? So, uh, at that, that time, it was like 225000 Good gracious. And I said, you know, Lord oh, Almighty. Man. So, yeah, so those are some things that happened, Bert. But yeah. it... Uh, you know that's why you got to stay on, and you got and, and you got to be a, you got to be a no person. Most agents want to be yes guys, right? And they don't want to get fired. Well, they'll, whatever they want to do, it's okay. And to me, you're not going to get any respect these guys if you're telling them what they can do all the time. You got to tell them no. And that's what they want to hear. They want structure. They want to be able to know. Well, especially when you know if you if they can look at some of the veterans who are doing well, and a lot of it has to do with the sports agent. You're going to get a lot of respect. No question. And so, you know, and again. If these guys are going down the wrong path when they're 35 or 40 and they're not doing the job, I'm not doing my job. So I want to point to guys that are in their post-career and doing other things and say, listen, these guys managed the right way, and here's, why, here's how they did it and why they did it. Well, you're Speaking of being it. fired, have you, have, have, have you ever been in the awkward position where maybe you had to take on a client that maybe got rid of a buddy, you know, buddy of yours, maybe in the same business, because maybe you, you had more contacts, you could maybe do more for him, Post career that maybe the other guy could, no question, and and that's a great question, Vern. It's happened to me several times where I've taken on clients from, you know, friendly competitors, I should say, right, that aren't too happy with me, and they said, well, you should have, you know, you should not take them because I they're with me. I said, well, if you were doing your job better, then yeah, I would, really. I shouldn't have to take right. Them. So that does happen, and and uh, and that's not 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 the fun not the fun part of the job, but you know, it does definitely happens that way at times, which. Uh, is uh, has worked out for me, which has been good. But sometimes uh, it, it can work kind of both ways. Uh, like on the, let's just say on the client right. side, and I won't name any names, but I know one player that had an agent, a buddy of mine, and but but this agent had no Hollywood contacts, and he knew he wanted to be an actor, he wanted to be a thespian once his career was over. But then he goes with Tom Condon because Condon's tentacles re reached much further into the entertainment world. And so Cotton was able to give him a fat contract, but also give him some cameos and some acting lessons. And he's been he's been he's been on the air a bunch of times in some episodes. Well, and that's one of the hard part. I mean, that, now as you know, I mean, CA is involved, the Creative Artists Agency in, in LA and, and Hollywood, their biggest player out there. Jay Z's involved now too. So mm -hmm. you're going to get the occasional kid that thinks that if they go to CA, they're going to be now involved in in movies or in studios or whatever it may be. Uh, same thing with some people with Jay Z. Think hey, I'm going to get over Jay Z. I'm going to hang out with Beyonce every night. Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know you're going to lose some fights, Vern. No question. You know, man. In that situation, I probably said, listen, you know, instead of going to CA, once you go to William Morris with no football division, no, right. comp no competing clients, and I can still advise you, but now we can structure something with them where you're the only fish in town mm -hmm. instead of you know 150 other players. So, Ooh. but that does happen at times, and you want to hopefully sit down and have a relationship where. The client will tell you what he's thinking and what he wants to do and, and devise a plan to get them. You know, one of the things I wanted to bring up uh, that we were talking about last week with the financial advisor in, in sports uh, was the idea that, you know, these guys didn't j win the lottery. I mean, these, these football players, these guys worked hard for their money. So we get all these leeches out there, you know, clamoring for it. You know, I, I like the, the, we were watching that, you know, 30 for 30, you know, broke and all that. And the guy said, you know, I earned this money. And they did. You know, that's a, I hope, you know, you, you know, agents are telling these guys, you know, don't just let these people leech off of you just because you have more money than you work for. It. And then having said that, uh, true or false, that, that maybe the baseball, the lengthy baseball career, maybe the money is there over time. Football career, it's front loaded because you're mm -hmm. playing for the signing bonus, right? Well, you're right. And, and now contracts become, you know, more guaranteed. You know, I mean, most contracts now are typically... You know, 60 to 70 percent guaranteed in football. If you look at a, a 30 million dollar deal, usually it's that way. But the, the, the NFL doesn't help out either. For example, most listeners don't know this in baseball and basketball, you get paid year round. Okay, like normal 12 football. months. That's what yeah. I was going to ask you. Football, okay. they only get paid during the season. Football, they? you get paid over 17 weeks. Now, wow. 
if it's us, all you know, middle-aged people who are you know uh, have been it's around a little bit, been around a little bit. Uh, yeah, time, value, money. You want to get paid over seventeen, which if you're making ten million bucks, sure, okay. Sure. But the problem is now you take a kid who's 22, 23 years old, and you're giving them five hundred thousand dollar checks every week, every Tuesday. Some teams, believe it or not, don't even do direct deposit. So now they're oh, handing these checks wow. to the players on Tuesday. Oh, I've been at a client's house where he, got, he had like six checks, 300 grand a piece, and mom was pressing him to say, Doug, you think I should just give this one to mom and get it off my back? I said, no. <laughs> no, no. The same no. Thing with, didn't Ricky Henderson just post, he put he put his million dollar check up there, he hadn't cashed it yet? Uh, Doug, stay with that thought, we're gonna come back. Uh, we have to take another break here. This is a little too much fun here. Which, okay, uh, going to the second commercial break, theme is World Series. Which team was the first to win the World Series as a wild card? Mm -hmm. The first three callers with the correct answer won a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouse4fun.com. Call 888-660-4495 to answer this I question. I think I know that one. Okay. Oh, Which team was the first to win the World Series as a wild card? 888-660-4495. And, of course, you got to have the wild card come into existence first, right? right That'll make right. it a little easier. 888-660-4495. And uh, don't touch that dial because Sports Econ 101 will be right back. And they yeah, they beat the Giants along the way. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. Oh, yeah. Upset the Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, in fact, they did, it, they did it twice to the Giants. In 03, they did the mm -hmm. same thing. We were playing softball at the time. Yeah. Listening to the game, playing softball. And it's like, oh, that was a first I was sitting next to Ralph out. during that game in 03. Ralph Barbieri? And Dontrell Willis God, was pitching. Whatever, whatever, oh, yeah. Gosh, Ralph whatever was happened. so yeah. upset. He, Bang! When uh, Dontra Wallace tripled up the gap and scored yeah. two. Slammed me right on the leg. I said, Ralph, why'd you hit me in the leg? And I'm, I'm frustrated too, but that, why'd you hit me? Man, I'm sorry, I'm just so upset. It's funny, Willis is still trying to come back. He's playing this sort of like uh Yeah, he's playing uh, he, like that. uh yeah, that uh, that that team in I think um Newark? I think Rick played for him. Maybe, think, maybe yeah, New, Newark Newark Bears? Yeah, that's yeah. That, uh, uh, who was the manager there? Isn't he a local guy? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 He's from Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Was it oh, was God. it Incidental High School? Something like that. So you did interviews with Don Trell, didn't you? Yeah. What a nice guy. Yeah. God, oh, boy, he, how, oh, how could he just lost it? He, 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 never, he never got the payday either. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, he was on the verse. Yeah. He was okay, but yeah, right. Hopefully, he got a little bit money. I think he saved his money, though. I don't think he's he just frittered it all away. Like, it's just him and his mom. Wow. He was the kind of guy that had that crew hanging out. There's all this good stuff I want to cover. Too, you know. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to think I was going to ask if you could talk. About oh, and you, know, you know Bob Myers? Yeah. Now that's a guy that's said seen it. He's he's seen it from both sides. Yeah. He was an agent, so, and now he's yeah. So I represent I represent Mike Smith, Marvin Lewis, and Thomas Dimitrov, and Jim the Falcons. And okay. So, Seeing that side too is interesting, you know. Uh, you know, so I think Bob did a smart thing by getting in the. Uh, <laughs> well, that's uh, that's the one of the questions I was going to ask you because you you uh, represent non athletes, right? Well, what happened was so with so I was a. When I was a struggling agent trying to find my way, you know, trying all this, you know, going all across these schools, Thomas Dimitrov was a low-level scout, and he was in this VW van on the road 300 days a year, Ooh. and we struck up a really good friendship. And he said, "Hey, at some point when I'm ever GM, I'm gonna have you represent me." I'm like, "Yeah, okay, whatever. sure. Let's just try to find the next meal." <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when he was with the Patriots, he was getting a couple sniffs, and then he called me and said, "Hey, man, the, the, I think Atlanta's gonna offer me the job." I said, "Wow." And then, so then he. Uh, he said, uh, we represent him. The next thing you know, Arthur Blank calls and working on yeah. I mean, his first many, contract. How many GMs? How many GMs? Well, it's funny. So, so when, that, when he got hired, that was the first wave of these young guys like Bob, but mm -hmm. in, in football, the young crew. It used to be old school GMs in football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now these guys are all young, late 30s, early 40s, yeah. and mm they come from scouting background. So they're all of ages now, all these GMs. And most personnel directors have them. Eight, uh, the, all the GMs have them. All the coaches do that stuff as well. So then from Thomas... It led to Mike Smith. It led to Marvin Lewis. Mm -hmm. So just I was I'm not looking for him. I wonder what the owners do. They go another another uh, agent to represent you right, know, right, the right. secretary. You know, I just it's funny. Agents mean? that became general managers outside of um, uh, Jeff Moorhead. Is there anybody else that's done that? Well, Bob Myers uh, okay. from the Warriors right. mm -hmm. and, and, Bob, side. Yeah. and then uh, and Bob. Uh, Bob's doing very well. Oh. He's got a great reputation. Mm -hmm. You should get him as a guest. He's, He's accessible. To yeah, I've mentioned that before. He'd be, yeah. he'd be a good one to have on. And he'd he'd be it. happy to do it. He'd probably come over here if he just took him out for lunch or something. Is it Bob Myers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a young guy. When is he? About 30. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a Danville guy. Play, you know, you know, he, 39, 40. Huh? Is there really? He had huge high school battles with uh, with Mad Dog. Really? Yeah. Oh, did he really? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know 
another half. Yeah, he was very highly regarded as an engine. I thought, you know, not a big name guy, yeah. but he was very good. Well, he was working with Art Ellum, and, and you know, they had a great, you know, Washington, so they had a really good practice. And yeah. he was definitely, you know, had some legit players and up and coming. So, but. Yeah, he's done a great job over there. I think that ownership group, we have the best ownership group in the Bay Area for pro sports. I really do. I, 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 I won't ask you on the air, but I mean, but there's got to be, there got to be some teams where, I mean, because, you know, you don't know where these guys are going to get picked, but when they get picked and, and you recognize the team and the, and the guy you're going to have to only deal with, you ever like, oh, uh, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Be thankful you don't have to deal with Absolutely. Al. Did you have to deal with Al Davis much? You know, it's funny. Yeah. I mean, I, the was problem with Al is that Al, you, you can't, you couldn't deal with Al until after 2 o'clock. You would, you literally. Yeah, because he would, yeah. He was a night out. supposed until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And, and no one could give him. You could never get a straight word out of the organization unless you actually talked out. Everything uh, came from, yeah. Everything, everything, everything came from, from uh, I think I like him, but we, we want to sign him, but we got to wait until that week. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. But what you were, what you had And he, and he would, and he, he would, he would hand, he was one of the guys that would hand write the checks. You had to go up to to the radio facility to get your check. Yeah. He was really interested. The last couple of years, he was. About, I'd say in 2000, 2004, because I, I was working on the broadcast, I used to call him up just to chat with him because he was always very friendly to me. Mm-hmm. And I guess because he knew me from, you know, he'd known that I'd been around the Raiders for a while. And he would talk about all sorts of things like the Russian 18th century, you know, monarchy, uh, you know, and this battle of some obscure battle of the First World War, you know, Klaus, and I, he, was, he was really interested in Clausewitz, who was some famous uh, military leader in the 19th century. So mm-hmm. I found a book. He goes, oh, you found the German book for me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, had a funny little sense of humor. But but when you look at some of these teams that are not very good, you wonder, you know, especially in the advent now for agency in the draft, how can you be that bad for that long? Yeah. And you look at the top and you're like, oh, oh my God. This is, no mm-hmm. this, this is why. Yeah. Just yeah. between us, who are yeah. some of those guys without saying on the air? Because I'm just curious. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Detroit, Detroit's awful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cleveland's been a, a train wreck, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Oakland's been horrific. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Miami has been bad. Now, why Oakland? Because of Al, is it Al Davis? Because he was just not. There was just there was no there was no, there was no structure. It was Al and then no one else. There's yeah. no true general manager. Yeah. It's got to be getting better though. Now that they're starting to, it's getting. Are you dealing with Reggie right. McKenzie at all? Reggie's great. Yeah. I love Reggie. Yeah. I mean, Reggie's fantastic. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a it's a five year project. Unless yeah. they find a QB, which they clearly haven't found it yet with one of these guys. How about Balky? Is he is he Balky's cool? been great. Yeah. yeah. Balky's great. Well, he's got that funny voice. It's very distinctive. He sounds yeah. like the guy from, uh, from uh, uh, he sounds like Super Dave Osborne. Yeah. Doesn't he? Yeah. Well, he's still, you know, he's still a little bit grown into the media part of it because he's never, you know, he was always the personnel guy. He was always yeah. behind everybody else. Mm-hmm. And then he gets kind of, you know, pushed in the, in, the, in, the, in the gig. And so that's not his forte as far as dealing with the media and press conference mm-hmm. and those sort of things, right? He's a so, fun guy just to chat with, though. Just oh, great. Right. Very knowledgeable. Yeah. yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah, and very you know easy to talk to. Mm-hmm. You can go up to him if you yeah. just introduce yourself. By, yeah. by the way, the guy the, the guy I was talking about, uh, he was an Ambi Yeah, yeah. And he had and he had Steve Baker. Oh yeah. Since since he was a cow. Yeah. And then but uh, but Steve could only hang with him for just just before, just before he signed that guy big that big fat contract. I remember he that. switched to Tom because I met with him too. He met with he met with me and them. Really? Wow. And, and uh, yeah, and that was uh, talk about a blow for Baker. I was Oh so, God! It's just but, but to, to to this day bothers him. To this day, I yeah, mean his knees buckle because because he lives about a mile from me, and he's just he, don't mention that. He name. just uh, he, he he would he would literally get nauseous. Is he still for working pretty pretty heavily? Is he? Is so he's he trying. Yeah. yeah. He just, does he have any clients right now? He's got maybe one. He's got like it's funny. He lucked out a lot. Of line, like that. He had lucked out a lot of local guys. Never really got never really left here, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and had some guys, and and and, and then. You know, obviously Garcia was a, uh, that was a, big a huge win. win. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah, they had that linebacker on the Redskins. That's how he built his house Ken on Harvey. Hillside. Um, Ken Harvey. Ken Harvey. Yep, at him. Former Cal guy. Yeah. Uh, then he had uh, who was that lineman for the Colts for years? Glenn. Uh, Tar Glenn. Tar. Yep. Tar, yep. Tar Glenn. Cal guy. But um, after that, just has not been. You know that Cal has 40 guys in the NFL camps this year? 40. Four, wow. I got, about, I got about 12 of them. I know. They're great. They got I mean, it's they amazing. Got why, aren't they, why aren't they a better team with all these great players? You know, I have no idea, man. Well, I mean, you know why. Yeah, exactly. I'm still, I'm still scratching my head on how how Stanford can 
go out and get these valedictorians and yeah. salutatorians that are also top-notch football players. I mean, I these know. are like three, four, four, and five-star kids. For three or four years yeah. in a row. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's an amazing yeah, story. Amazing. Such a fantastic Cool. Yeah. Is it okay if I put you on a little bit on the hot seat about, you know, given the potential conflicts of interest an agent might have uh, that arise from being compensated on a percentage of value of the contract? Um, you know, how do you deal with that, you know, front loading it? I mean, that, like the structure yeah. of how you yeah. Yeah. talk about. Yeah. And then uh, if you wanted to get into a couple other things, like Dwight Howard, where he says, you know, to gut this thing out, stay, that's a real team player, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vernon Glenn mm -hmm. and Bruce McGowan. We're in the studio here with Doug Hendrickson, who is a sports agent. When we cut to the second commercial break, we ask the trivia question. Which team was the first to win the World Series as a wild card? I'm going to let Vernon answer. I'm going to go 1997 Florida yeah. Marlins. That is correct. Yeah. Those were the Cleveland Indians. Yes. Oh, yeah. And then they beat, the, of course, the Giants along the way, and they beat the Giants again in 03 and beat the Yankees that year. That is that is correct. Oh, wow. First round. Okay, well, they, you know what? The uh, the next trivia question is going to be a little harder. Okay. I'm going to stump you guys just a little Bring bit. Bring it, baby. Okay. We're going to put Doug on the hot seat here for just a little bit because we're talking about uh, agents and compensation, and you get paid a percentage of their um, – the, do you get paid on the endorsements too? Yeah. With, in football, the max you can charge is 3%, unlike baseball and basketball where it's, 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 it's 4 or 5 uh, and then we charge on the endorsements, so it's fifteen percent on cash endorsements and then three percent on the contract. And you're you get you get obviously get involved in their endorsements then. Correct. Uh, okay. So then, well, do they they call you first? Yeah. So most if, I mean, if, if it's like uh, you know, uh, you know, Burn Glen Energy Drink, and we want your client to you know, we got a commercial spot, we want them to be a part of. You're, yeah, I would say you know it's interesting. I would say Vern, ninety percent of the players out there were proactively making calls, okay? Now, Octagon represents clients like Michael Phelps, mm -hmm. Apollo Ono. Right. And obviously, you know, there's not too many proactive phone calls for him when they're coming in left and right. It's almost to say, what's the, what, what, what's the right deal for him? But most players, as you know, Vern, you know, we're proactively making these calls, uh, it, except for the, the high-end guys um, and whatnot. But, yeah, we're, they, they come to us, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're vetting the deals and making sure they're good and facilitating everything. And, all that so it's uh it's good okay so i, I wanted to ask about like the potential conflict of interest um you know how players signing let's say a one-year deal versus a long-term deal you know how do you how do you balance that out i mean especially like in football you know it's only what's the average three to five years playing so how, how do you how well do you first of all you really got to check the agent's ego at the door because <laughs> you have to you really look at it and figure out what makes most sense to the player and the family and and figure out you know, long term or short term, and and this is not baseball where you could be a, a two sixty five hitter one year and then maybe dip to two fifty eight, and still get kind of the same contract. Football is you know any given play you're perfectly done, let alone right. the value. So you know to to me our, our job is to enhance any deal, but more importantly to educate the player on the risk reward scenario. If you don't take this long term deal, okay, then you may have nothing. Yeah. Okay, you may have more. You may have, so you have to. So to, to me, it's about educating. And I think most agents don't educate the right way in terms of how free agency looks next year, what your value could be, your position. What if you get hurt? All these different yeah. things go into play that you have to really sit there and analyze. Exhaust. And, and I get one of my clients, Leon Hall, who's one of the top paid corners in football, signed a massive deal. But at the time, you know, his family thought he should get more uh, around Revis money. And I said, not going to happen. Here's why: the Bengals. You're a year away from free agency. They mm -hmm. franchise you ten million bucks, so you'll never get this money. And then, you know, I had to go out there on a blackboard and literally break it down, pros, cons, and, and why to do it, and end up taking the deal. And eight weeks later, tears the Achilles. Ooh, mm -hmm. and it's a guaranteed so, contract. Right? And so instead of instead of getting uh, instead of playing a one year deal for maybe two million dollars next year, uh, he got twenty eight million guaranteed. Speaking so, <laughs> speaking of deals, in the case of say. I'll just I'll just say since it's kind of like the, the the big topical thing at least around here, Colt McCoy restructures his contract with the 49ers. Some say, wow, you know, if he didn't restructure his deal, he may not even be a 49er. But because he does it, it makes it more affordable for the team to keep him or shop him around. They ended up you know keeping him. He's the solid number two quarterback. That was maybe a smart move on his part. You buying that? 
Uh, yeah, because, well, first of all, the agent wouldn't have restructured it unless he knew there was no market for him. So immediately what happens is the agent hears we want to restructure, gets on the phone with every key in the QB, would you take Colt for this money if he was cut? And the answer, I'm sure, from every team was no. Yeah. And so, Colt, you want a job with the Niners for a million, whatever he's making, or do you want no job? He said, I want the job. So that's how that happened. But, yeah, smart move on the player's smart, smart move on the, on the agent's part. Uh, it's a bummer because obviously, you know, as an agent, you want the team hopefully not to do that because obviously they know what the deal is. They know no one's going to want them. Well, plus so. some of these guys too, you, know, you got to figure, you know, how much of it is the money side of it versus, you know what, if I play, if I go to this team, I can actually play versus be a you know third string quarterback. Well, I think in the case of Colt though, he had uh, he had been through two teams. The Niners was his third team, and it's just funny how things. I'd love to be a fly on the wall when these decisions were made because when we woke up the morning of the Vikings game. It was as if he was going to be dealt. He was trade bait. It was all this and then, wow! At the end of the game, Harbaugh's like, "Hey, he's my solid number two. He had a great week of practice. He just..." And then he started going to the whole Harbaugh-isms, you know, mighty men, humble hearts, and all that kind of stuff. They humble hearts. Oh yeah, there, there's mind games where look. I mean, the team's going to come to you a lot of times and say, "Hey, you know, we need to know right away if you want this or not. If you don't, we got another guy waiting." In. And then you're right. Then you do something the next day. Oh, the guy's the greatest QB in the world. It's like, <laughs> you know, like what? On, 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 it's Friday morning. Thursday, it's like this guy was horrific, and he couldn't even start on the high school team. Now he's the greatest QB in the world. Oh man! I want to ask you a little more sophisticated question here. Which, by the way, I want to give a little plug. A little, uh, Mike Zadlin, uh, my uh, office roommate next door, is a financial advisor, and so uh, he and I were talking about sports, and he gave me a bunch of these questions. So thank you, Mike, for that. When you're talking with uh, these athletes, you know, if you go, if they get. Um, Let's say Texas, okay, Dallas Cowboys want. There's no state income tax, and half of the income would be earned there, and then half, we talked about this before, they got to pay, pay taxes in every state that they play where they, there's an income tax. I mean, you got to figure that that's going to be part of the money situation because, you know, figure here, a $30 million contract from the Cowboys is going to put an extra million and a half in the client's pocket versus a $30 million contract from, let's say, uh, the Chargers or or. I bet California. most of your clients don't even know they got to pay taxes in all the states they play. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? They, as rookies, they have no clue, yeah. and they don't think they—I don't think they even know the Fed takes money initially either. They get the first check like, "Who's FICA?" There's four. <laughs> <laughs> four that check was for hey four man, who's million, this Doug? guy FICA? Man, uh, every year rookie call me and say, "Doug, <laughs> yeah, let's say the check is for four million. Well, it's only two point six. I go, okay, and then like. Well, it's not. Can you call the team? I said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, the, the whole the whole state yeah. taxes. You know, I'll give an example. I you know I represent one of my clients, Marshawn Lynch, and you know beast there, mode. Yeah, beast mode. There was a time there when he you know could have been a free agent after you know, two years ago in Seattle. They're always going to franchise him, but we're talking about you know I'd love to play for the Raiders. That's where he's from. Grew up in Oakland. I said, mm-hmm. okay, well, you look at the no state taxes in Seattle. Okay, in the state of Washington versus California, and then, and then obviously now it's thirteen percent, like we all know. We're all suckers living here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Um, ask myself why all the time, but uh, I said, look, your thirty-one million you're getting from Seattle is going to have to be about thirty-four, thirty-five yeah. here. Okay, it's a, a significant increase, and so you know, that's real money, real money on an, on an annual basis. So, uh, so the agent, yeah, you look at that all around. And teams are doing a better job, too, of now selling in for agency as far as, look, come to Miami, come to Tampa, come to Tennessee, wherever, with no state taxes. So I think in the long run, it will hurt some teams, especially in California, with this the exorbitant taxes that are here, that if you really put pen to paper and look at it and analyze the deals together, and if they're relatively similar, you know, look, it's it's hard to choose somewhere else if the, if the money's the same. And how much of that do you have to be first on versus having a team of people? Because you obviously have... It, like you said, you you know financial advisors. You know you're not going to just pick some Joe Blow who seems to know what he's talking about. You, you know you talk to say Goldman Sachs and all these companies, which I don't know what they know about like insurance. But um, you know how, how much of that do you have to read up on? A lot. And, and one of the things we do is you know to me that the, one of the most important decisions the player makes after the agent is the accountant as well as the financial. Yeah, advisor. I like to have separate checks and balance have separate, but. Yeah. The account comes to play a lot for us in contract negotiations. I mean, uh, I'll give you an example. I have Dion Jordan. I have Dion Jordan at number three this year, and as a large firm that we are, we're able to do what's right for the player. If you're an independent agent and a player gets ten million dollars in 2013, that independent agent is going to want his fee now. 
we're able to say, listen, if it's better to pay in 2014, okay, yeah. defer that money to 14 uh, and for tax reasons and our, our fee, yeah. then that's fine. So I'll work with the accountant to find out how is the player going to save his money. Is it best to pay in 14? Is it best to pay early? What's the right way to go? And, and give the, the client an educated answer in terms of what's best. You know, I don't know if you guys remember this, um, but it, Pete Rose tried to do this many years ago when he was playing where he wanted to be an independent contractor rather than an employee of, of the organization. And the thing is, he couldn't assign the contract because you can't just put, you know, Edward Brown in to play, you know, instead of Pete Rose. So there, there's all these little, you know, rules and taxes and, and stuff. That, it's just incredible. You ever roll your eyes listening to talk radio when they, you know, Fan X calls and goes, well, yeah, uh, they, they need to go out and sign so and so. You're saying, yeah, that team's got dead money. They can't afford it. Yeah. Yeah, no, all the time. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, it's funny listening to these fans because, you know, it's great. I mean, obviously, it pays my salary, it pays the bills to have them crazy fans. But, yeah. I mean, some of these fans, I, I remember that a game that, like last year, I never forget a playoff game, and these fans were fighting, they were upset. And I said, you know what? I go, you care more than the players care. I mean, these players. Are <laughs> that. It's true. Like, I go, let it go, man. Yeah, I, mean, like, I told you. I told you the story about Ralph Barbieri, my old yeah. my old colleague at KNBR. Ralph was the hardest core fan, giant fan I ever met. And during a game once in a playoff series down in Miami, he literally slammed his fist against my my leg in frustration when Dontrell Willis tripled in two runs. I said, Ralph, what are you doing? I go. Oh, we're losing the game, darn it. I said, Ralph, don't make a big deal. It's just baseball. Well, that, that's what I wonder. It's like, you know, Giants fans, you know, oh, yeah. the Dodgers, right? I wonder players, players don't hate players. The, no, yeah. they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. And, and it was funny. We're all Bay Area guys. I love all the Bay Area teams. I mean, you're from yeah. here, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I want them all to do well. They better... The, the more sure. they do well, then we all do well. I mean, so it's like, I, I'm a Niner fan, hate the Raiders, right? Nah. I hate the, I'm just like, like them all. Or Cal, all St- Cal Stanford, maybe I can understand it to the degree if you went to yeah, one Yeah, college is a little different. But that's, but still, yeah. I, I don't know about you, I'd like to see them both win. You ever, you ever, you ever hear a, an outrageous deal and you scratch your head going, God, how in the world, man, how did he, get that? How did he how in the world did he get that? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to name someone, but there's something else I'm thinking, so what is going on here? Uh, I mean, you got to be. Yeah, you probably and you probably have a figure in your mind about uh, you, you probably have an idea of maybe 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 the worst contract you've ever seen hey, what was heard the worst or heard. Contract you've ever seen or heard? Can you can you bear it all? Obviously, without naming names. Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe a team from, yeah, just threw some money at the guy, and maybe they're still maybe well, he's been retired are, fifteen years, and he's and he's, and he's and they're still paying him. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I think in, in football there's not as many as in as in baseball and basketball. There's a lot in those sports, as you know. Um, I'll, I'll think about football as a few, few, I think, the worst. I mean, obviously, Albert Hainsworth comes to mind as one of the most horrific oh, yeah. contracts. Wow. Yeah. yeah. How about Jamarcus Russell? Well, yeah. that was a rookie, yeah. so you had to yeah. pay him that, yeah. you know. But, yeah. you know, some free agent deals where you have an owner that is desperate to win. You have a young general manager. You have a young head coach, and they're just going to spend money to spend it. Uh, you know, you could argue back in the day that the Nate Clements deal the Niners gave was a horrific deal the Niners mm-hmm. did. Now, I think it what it did is put him on the map to – entice other players but at the time that was a big deal and huge money for a player that some didn't think was worth it yeah how about uh how about two number ones getting getting swept between the uh the 49ers and the chiefs uh dawson for for aj jenkins is it uh, uh our pos for your pos but we don't want to look bad what that means is both both teams made a mistake and yeah <laughs> okay and hey it's, guys, it's, it's, gonna... it's easier to cut their guy yeah. instead of cut your own guy correct exactly. okay okay we're gonna cut to our third and final commercial break. When we come back, I want to talk just a little bit about Dwight Howard, because he says, uh, gut this thing out, and want to talk, you know, because there's a little bit of the sports agent thing can get thrown in there, too. Okay, name the only National and American League teams to ever get swept in the World Series after sweeping their opponents in the League Championship Series. Mm. The first three callers with the correct answer want a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Mm. Um, call... 888-660-4495 to answer this question. Name the only National and American League teams to ever get swept in the World Series after sweeping their opponents in the League Championship Series. Kind of a fun question. Uh, make sure to include your name, your email address. But speak slowly, spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't touch that dial because Sports Econ 101 will be right back with some closing comments and also talk about Dwight Howard and what he said. Yeah, you got to think of who got swept. I think one was the Yankees. Didn't, didn't, well, I know the I know one of them was the Tigers in, in 06. They swept the A's in four, and then they were swept by the Cardinals. That's the only one. That's Gary Young. He's fine. I mean, we, we talk about we talk about once a month because I, I've been at Channel Five for the last 
year in oh, that's January. Right. Okay. Is it working that's out right. for you, bro? Good. Yeah, so yeah. far so good. I, man, I, I, I've yeah, covered yeah. I've covered more football in the last year than uh, it's me um, than than I did in say like the last five or six. Have you, at have you thought in the last uh, you know five to ten years about you know obviously I'm sure you've had offers to, to do an ESPN or to do you know NFL Network or something like that. I mean, because it seems like it's all going in that direction, right? And it is. Yeah, it is. It, um, but then, but then again, you have a great niche here, and so it's like it's a great situation. Well, I, I, I had a, I had a conversation with a uh, with a buddy of mine about this very thing because I had a chance, uh, I had a chance to go to Chicago, I had a chance to go to uh, Tampa, and uh, and the guy said, "Hey, man, just just do your due diligence before you make a move like that. You got to think." You have you have to think about the equity that you have in the market, and then and, and then if you take that that next leap of faith, you're starting all over again, right. and your act here might not work in Chicago. Yeah. No, so so it's no loyalty. No loyalty. Like no, yeah, right. I remember yeah, a classic yeah, example. Like we had a guy when I was in Seattle named Bruce King, who had lived there for 24 mm -hmm. years on TV. He was like an institution. Goes to New York, and I had gotten a job in New York at the same time. So I thought, oh, that's kind of neat, you know, that Bruce King, who I knew, and he just poor guy, he just. And off badly, and went back. And luckily, got back to Seattle. For me, for me, for the ESPN thing, basically, the time yeah, for me to go true. there would have been like '96 yeah. or '7, because now it's all it's, it's it's all kids now that are working there. They yeah. just not you know, right. they're, they're, they're not married. They just pick up. They just move to Bristol, yeah. where, which is and they make you it's, work it's, it's ESPN, yeah. and yeah. then or a couple of hotels and some fast food. Or even NFL Network or the new Fox. I mean, it's it's the same thing. And then the turnover is tough. Basis. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's gotten bad. Yeah. yeah. So, it's that's like, uh, and you, I have a thing here for, because I have a couple of business shows that I, that I do. And, and, uh, and so Zuckerberg mm -hmm. says, you know, yeah, that 30 is the new 40. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. They said, they talk about how, uh, you know, yeah, you got to do what's important, you know, basically, forget family mm -hmm. and just work 24 7. In fact, I'm putting it in there, you know, my own words before. It's like, man, you know what? Life's too short. But I remember I, I, I came out here with like bounce. a I came yeah. out here with a three year plan and I just I just never left. Yeah. It just you know. I mean when I was And I've been with the same firm <laughs> since nineteen eighty five I'm with Beanstock, Ennis Beanstock. Yeah, okay. And uh, they even they even dipped their toe in the uh, in the sports world. They uh they they had they had Marshall Falk. Oh, well, okay. that, that was their first big thing. And uh, but that didn't last I mean long. with the balance, you know, it's like for years I did, you know, tax and public and all stuff, and I, I realized that so an old associate had told me, he says, you know what, nobody on their deathbed ever said, yeah, I wish I would have spent more time oh, yeah. in the office. At the and office. it's true, and that mm -hmm. resonated with me. So yeah. I come home early, even though I was doing, you know, a couple hundred tax returns a year, mm -hmm. I come home early, you know, forget tax season, see my son, two years old, swimming in the pool with my wife, and mm -hmm. then, you know, right, 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 right. Says, Man, right. I'm the pool with them, you know? Yeah. Okay, no, it could have no, an extra 150000 a year, but it's sure. not worth it. Right. Right. Okay, we got a fast segment here. Yes. Just two minutes thirty seconds. We'll do our two thirty. Wow. 2 30. Yeah. That was fast. Oh, we have fun. Yeah, I won't get it. It's funny. I was going to get into. We don't have time. Uh, I'll save this for another time. If he's still playing well, Miguel Cabrera. Oh, sure. another oh my God! Jeez. That's amazing. And Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. The crazy thing about these baseball players is that these guys are all looked at as well. Is he doing it? Is he doing it? You know, mm -hmm. the PED stuff, right? And the right brought What a joke that was! Uh, yeah. it is. Disaster. Well, it just it wouldn't be so bad if he just didn't like stick his chest out and just uh, and just uh, Rafael Pomeroy. Yeah, you know, and, and, all these guys just be well, like. And, and the crazy thing is that it, it's thing. I, in fact, I had a dinner in Baltimore with a bunch of my clients today, and I'm talking about the Brian Braun situation. I said the ironic part is that Braun already got paid, so it's like he already right. made, he already made the money. So now it's like you're taking it to hey, come on, he wasn't taking it to rehab the kid. Yes. Okay. So it's like, why take it? I mean, what's that? Niners signed a guy. Yeah. What they sign? A linebacker. Oh. That rush is so deep. Man. Joe Holland. God, they got so many linebackers. I remember they, I remember they, got one. The they got the answer. Is it three, okay. is it three teams? Uh, there's only one national and one American League team. But Okay. I don't know one of them. I don't care. Okay, well, let's okay. Okay, you guys ready? I'm okay. real. Yeah. Here we go. Hey. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn, Yo. Bruce McGowan, hey. and our studio here. We got Doug Henderson, uh, sports agent. 
When we cut to the uh, third and final trivia question, uh, commercial break, we ask this question. Name the only National and American League teams to ever get swept in the World Series after sweeping their opponents in the, na in the League Championship Series. Bruce. Nin 1990 Cincinnati Reds. Uh, 1998s. Were beat, I'm sorry. Yeah, beat by the Right. They swept they the uh, Red, Red Sox, Sox and, and then they were swept by the – Correct. And then the 2006 Detroit Tigers swept the A's. And then they were swept by the Cardinals. No, they, they actually won one of the games. The A's did? Uh, no, the uh, Cardinals. Had, or excuse me, the, uh, Detroit had won. Is won that game. right? Yeah. Okay. But, but you're close in the years. Okay. The 2007 Rockies oh, were swept right. by Red Sox, but they swept the uh, Diamondbacks. Oh. Okay, change the subject here for just a minute here. Okay, Dwight Howard uh, was quoted as saying something along the lines of, he's going to gut this thing out by staying with the Lakers for one more year. And apparently he was asking for Kobe to get traded and coach <laughs> Um, D'Antoni? D'Antoni. D'Antoni to get uh, fired. I mean, that, is that a team player or what? No, and then the Warriors are talking about bringing him up here. Yeah, they I mean, they weren't well. talking about it. Well, they he ended up getting about. his now, now that he's a Houston Rock. In the agent's world, that's called damage control quickly to figure how to spin this one the right way. So wow. that's never yeah. easy. That, that's a good point. Hey, what's, 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 the, what's the easiest... What's the easiest deal you ever made? Okay, in, ter in terms of in terms really of we got to in, in terms of how quickly you got it done. I would say Justin Tuck's deal with the Giants. I mean, they they came out of hard, came out you know right out of the gate quickly, and I recognized now that it was a good deal short term and long term, and, and that was uh, that was probably a, a big big deal that was done very very fast. Wow. Right. Okay, Doug Hendricks, thank you so much for joining us today. I want to thank also my co-hosts Bruce McGowan and Vern Glenn. Thoughts for the day. Baseball players must be smarter than football players. How often do you see a baseball team penalized for too many men on the field? <laughs> and Steve Garvey said, the difference between the old play ball player and the new ball player is the jersey. The old ball player cared about the name on the front. The new ball player no. cares about the name on the back. Mm. Remember that? Oh, that's a good one. Well, that, that's yeah. a good one. Good. Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and giving away more vacations for answering trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, America. So long. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank no, you. it's fun. Thank you, Ron. Good.